I, it's not just for you. Because of you, God will protect your family. Give me a good amen. Because of us, righteous people, God will protect our community. And Abraham said, what if you find 20 there? Almighty God said, if I find 20 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, I will spare them. Abraham said, oh Lord, this is the last number. He, he, he was looking at the crowd. He was thinking out of this crowd, there will be at least 10 righteous people. Righteous people that hate sin like they hate snake. Righteous people that will run away from sin, even if they find that sin, like they find a snake in a private place and nobody else is there, they will run. Righteous people that, even if you offer sin to them, like a gift, they will run away. Like if somebody offers a snake or a demon to you, you will run away. Righteous people like that, when God finds them, He protects the community. And so Abraham thought, with all this crowd, there should be at least ten. Not ten churchgoers. Not ten baptized people. Not ten confirmed people who are still drinking and smoking and committing adultery and fornication. Not ten churchgoers who are still dancing and all these uh, things like they have in the nightclub. Not, not that kind of thing. Righteous people. Holy people. The people who are washed and cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. The people without, they are clean and holy. The people in their language, in their thoughts, they are righteous. The people, they are saved, they are surrendered, totally given unto the Lord. The people who have separated themselves. From all those evil things in Sodom and Gomorrah, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and I will receive you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Ten righteous people who have come out clean and clear. God said, if I see ten such righteous people there, you will be one of those people. I said you will be one of those people that God will say, if I see you in a family, if I see you in a community, if I see you in a society, because of the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb, because of the salvation of your soul, because of your separation from sin and evil. Because of your sincerity in following the Lord. And God says, because of you, I will delay the judgment. I will not bring my calamity, my wrath, my indignation, my judgment upon the land because of you. And so Abraham said, oh God, only ten. And so God said, that's all right, I'll spare them. And Abraham thought, that's all right. You know, there are times you stop your prayer too early. You have mentioned 10. Then you thought in your mind, God will find 10. Why don't you pray a little bit more? Why don't you seek a little bit more? Why don't you plead a little bit more? But Abraham said, that's all right, God. God went his way. And then Abraham went his way. 
And then God released those two angels to go to Sodom and Gomorrah. When they go to Sodom and Gomorrah, that's what we are talking about. Lingering on the night of danger. Loafing on the night of danger. Loitering on the night of danger. There are three points I'm going to talk about. Number one, lawlessness towards the ambassadors of mercy. Lawlessness towards the ambassadors of mercy. Number two, lingering before the angels of mercy. Lingering before the angels of mercy. Number three, lost after the announcement of mercy. Announcement of mercy had been made. The angels had held on their hands. And the angels had brought them out. And you will see, after the announcement of their mercy, they are saved and forever saved. But lost after the announcement of mercy. Let's look at number one. Lawlessness towards the ambassadors of mercy. In Genesis chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 1. And there came two angels, those are, those are the ambassadors of mercy, to Sodom at evening. Lord, search in the gate of Sodom. And Lord, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, tarry all night, and, when you, and, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And he said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly. And he turned in unto him. And entered into his house. And he made them a feast. And did bake on living bread. And they did eat. Those, those two angels, they came to see what was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was night already, evening already. And they wanted to see the activities of the night in Sodom and Gomorrah. How early, how late do the people sleep? They wanted to know. When the sun is down and they are away from their farms and from their shops and from their trade and from their market, what do they do? The angels wanted to know. While everybody should be tired and resting, what do the Sodomites and the people of Gomorrah, what do they do? The angels wanted to know. And so they came in the evening. Lord saw them. He saw the ambassadors of mercy. Tonight you will see the ambassadors of mercy. If you come here this night, as you are there now, if you only see me, if you only see the choir, if you only see our ministers, if you don't see these ambassadors of mercy, you have not seen enough. 
Lord saw the ambassadors of mercy. And then he came to them. He said, I receive you. I receive you. When you receive the ambassadors of mercy, you receive the mercy of heaven into your life, into your family. It makes you to escape the judgment and the wrath of God. When you receive the ambassadors of mercy, then it makes you to receive the peace of God, the joy of God, the mercy of God, and then all the problems that would have come after that, everything will pass over you in Jesus' name. Those ambassadors of mercy, they said, were still on the street. We want to see what they do in their nightclub. We want to see what they do on their streets. We want to see those dignified men and women in the afternoon. We want to see when they come out in the night, what do they do? We want to look at those who use the darkness as cover and they commit crime. We want to see them. And so, but Lord said, it's a dangerous place. You don't know Sodom and Gomorrah. No stranger can come here and stay in the street in the night. He pleaded with them until they entered into his house. And then in verse 4, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, they come past the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. They called unto Lord and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Now they, they all came, old and young, as the children in Sodom and Gomorrah were growing up. The elders, the older people were teaching them how to be wicked, how to be cruel, how to be violent. As the elders were getting into trainers, they were teaching and training those young people how to drink, how to be drunk. As the older women were living and dressing in a way to attract immorality, almost half naked, they were teaching and training directly, directly. How the younger ladies and the daughters, how they too will be half naked. They were passing the sin, the immorality, the corruption, the wickedness and the crime. They were passing from the elders to the younger generation. And so all those people in Sodom and Gomorrah, old and young, they came around and they said, Lord, where are the people? Those people that came, bring them out. It, it, there was no respect in their language. There was no humility or love in their language. There was no submission, subdued tone in their language. Every appearance, everything they did was all violence and crime. Oh, and Lot came out. Lot said, don't do like that. They said, what are you talking about? We want to know them. When they said they wanted to know them, they were not talking about knowing them in their facial appearance. 
They wanted to abuse them, misuse them. They wanted to commit sin with them. That's why Lord said, don't do that. That's why they came under my roof. And then the son ah, will deal with you. You see, in Sodom and Gomorrah, violence and crime was the normal scene every day for them. Any day they woke up and they have not fought, that day is not a good day for them. If there is no fight, one. If there is no reason to be violent, they will create a situation to bring confusion and conflict. If there is no drunkenness, they will find something to bring that drunkenness and crime. It was their second nature. And any time there is no evil, they were not happy. And so they said, we'll deal with this man himself. In verse 9, they said, stand back. Said again, this one fellow came into to Sir John, and he will needs be a judge now. We will deal worse with thee than with them. Have you found some people, they're just going on the street? And two people are still trying to, why did you do that? What, who are you talking to? Don't talk to me like that. And, and, and this fellow is coming from another place. He doesn't know A or B. 